In this video, we're in the multiple linear regression setting and we're gonna look at the AIC. It's the information criteria named after this statistician. And the setting is that there's some underlying true model that we don't know. And we're gonna suggest several candidate models of, you know, of this form. And which one, which candidate model do we think best represents the true model? And the AIC attempts to get at that. Now the formula for the AIC is 2K uh, minus 2 times the log of the, uh, l the likelihood at the maximum value, where K is the number of estimated parameters, L is the maximum value of the likelihood function, and the smallest AIC among the candidate models is best. Okay, so I'm go going to give some intuition behind this and then sp uh, specifically go into the multiple regression setting. So this is the general formula. It works for uh, generalized linear models also. Um, it's based on the kolbach uh, liebler divergence. Sometimes they say information, but I like divergence because it... it uh, it kind of implies a separation of two things, you know, or, or one from another. And it, what it does is it measures the uh, probability distribution or how one probability distribution is different from a second reference probability distribution. I'm gonna call it TX. Uh, and this is uh, essentially from Wikipedia here. The TX, I, I use the T because that's gonna stand for the true model. So there's some distribution that this follows. And then we're fitting candidate models, f of x. And for the continuous case, it is this. This is it, the uh, uh, kolbach liebler divergence of f from the true population. This is the reference. And it's this. It's the, expect, or the integral of this. Um, now this is what's called an asymmetric measure of divergence because of the log is not uh, symmetric. So here's the heuristic argument behind AIC. Keeping in mind, this is our, our goal, is the kolbach liebler divergence. Um, heuristically, and now, oh, granted, this, I, I got a lot of this from Stats Exchange, statsstackexchange.com. Now we can rewrite this because the log of this uh, ratio is the log of the difference between those two and that's what we're doing here we just broke up this log into two and if we think about this the true model is the true model it's not going to change so this piece of the kolbach liebler divergence is constant so really we only need to look at this piece here this is the only part that's going to change the f for each candidate model that this is going to change so we can ignore this piece and only look at this piece. So, um, but a few notes that if we only look at this piece, the, the T of Y is unknown. But we do have data from T in Y. So when we collect our data Y and we also collect certain regressors, the Y comes from the true model. So in a sense, we have data from this piece right here. And the F of Y is the model that we're fitting. So this piece right here is the expected value of this log, you know, under T, right? Because when you take the expected value, you, you take it times the probability density function integrated over all possible values. That's what this is. So that is this. But notice that really this is just saying it's the average log of F of Y right with this distribution and so if we look at the sample estimate it's the sum of these logs divided by n now that we carry along the minus each time so this is the sample estimate okay but a few notes that that this is a uh, you know the the AIC is an asymptotic result and so you if we let n go to infinity there's what there's an asymptotic bias of k over n in this okay so we're going to use this piece plus this bias as a sample estimate of this piece okay 
But what they do next is they multiply these by 2n. So the n goes away. We get a 2k and then a minus this sum. But notice that if you take this, the sum of logs is actually the log of the product. And then the product of these f of yi's is actually the joint likelihood function. And so that's what the AIC is. This is an estimate of the Kobach-Leibler. We're actually the only part in the Kobach-Leibler that matters when we're trying to define the d divergence of our candidate model from the true model. Um, well, since it's an asymptotic result, it, it can become quite biased in small samples, and they noticed that. And, and so they corrected the AIC for small samples, and this is an added bias correction. So you'll often see the AIC corrected value. Now let's look at it specifically in the multiple linear regression setting. So y, f of y, it can be thought of as this. So that each of these y's are independent. So this joint distribution is actually the product of the marginals. And then um, this is, and since it's multivariate normal, this is the distribution. And notice that we're using the candidate models here. So then we take the, uh, you know, to maximize this, you know, you, we take the log and then the derivatives and we get a value, right? But let's look at the log likelihood evaluated at that maximum. So in here, we look at the maximum likelihood estimator of, of sigma squared, maximum likelihood estimator of this piece here, and this ends up being the sum of squares residual, and, and note that the maximum likelihood estimator of our error variance is sum of squares residual over n. So actually, so we're gonna get some cancellation here, and that's what we get. And so we take this piece, which is constant. Remember, we have one sample size and we're trying different predictors. So this is a constant, can be put in here. The sum of squares residuals can be changed and then what's left over is a constant. And so then we have this. And since this is sum of squares divided by n, it can be log of sum of squares minus log of n, right? So the log minus can go into here. And so what's left over is this. And um, so this is the log of the likelihood at, evaluated at the maximum likelihood, right? That's this piece. So the AIC becomes 2 times k plus 1 because we have beta 0, beta 1 through beta k minus 2, part of the AIC formula. Uh, and then that is goes in here. Now, um, this minus 2 can be distributed in here and we get this. But notice that the C doesn't change. For any model we pick, this is constant over here. It's these values that change. So this is, in a sense, in the multiple linear regression setting, the only things that matters. And um, that's what they call the AIC for multiple linear regression is this piece here. So this is the formula that you see in most cases. Now, what's interesting, it's, it's truly not the AIC value but it's the only value that matters. And so as long as you use the same computer system that does it consistently, then, then, you're, then you should be good. So there's a few notes here that, uh, that it's a relative measure, meaning it's only valid to compare models using the same data set. So if you have two data sets and you calculate AIC, they're not 100% comparable so you have to be careful about that. It's only candidate models using the same data set. Um, we must use the same outcome variable with all models. So we must use the same Y. So sometimes we transfer the Y. We might take the log of it or the, you know, the nth root, you know, some, some transformation and then recalculate the, you know, refit a model. And then we have an AIC. But since that used a different outcome measure, you can't compare it with models that use the original outcome variable Y. So you have to be careful there. Um, we shouldn't compare values between software programs because some have constants, uh, some leave out the constants and some don't. And so um, 
while this constant doesn't matter ultimately when you're comparing AIC values within the same computer system some computer softwares will include this constant in the AIC and some will only include the pieces that matter and so you have to be careful about comparing AIC values between uh, software packages um, the AIC corrected should be used for smaller sample sizes um, there are some that say you should just use it all the time because you know asymptotically this goes to zero and so they're they're asymptotically equivalent but so there's pros and cons with that um, while AIC is easy to calculate there are other information criteria that have been developed since I took my statistics course a long time ago and they claim they're more accurate now of course they're more computer intensive and calculation you know and intensive but they're considered more accurate and so you want if you want you can do more research in that area and as a reminder small AIC values are best and you want models that have a small AIC compared to the other model the other candidate models that you fit all right well that's all I have for this video hopefully you enjoyed that I sure did please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye